All right, Beth asked this question, how can you tell the difference between the flesh and the devil? Sometimes it may be difficult, but I'd like to give you a theory um, about that. And that is uh, flesh, and that's, you know, there's different meanings in the Bible of flesh. You know, there's, I think it's 50 times, I looked up recently how many times it says flesh and blood, for example, 50. And, uh, and then there's um, flesh with, which especially Paul mentions, but even I think Peter said, abstain fleshly lusts at war against your soul and things. Maybe that's body too. But I think it, it's more than just body. I've said this many times in videos. I'll just say it really quick in case you haven't heard the others. In Galatians 5, it mentions um, like it talks about the works of the flesh are manifest. Some of them are bodily in its appetites, if you will, the desires of the flesh, fornication, adultery. And all. But then it also talks about things like witchcraft and anger and jealousies and heresies. Heresies of false religion? How does that have to do, do with the body? So flesh is, is multi, uh, there's multi uses of it or something, or, or different de definitions of what he's talking about. Sometimes it's body, sometimes it's, it's this lower nature, this something that I would describe as self-centeredness, if, if you will. I think I got that. Uh, well, I know I got it from, I think the Lord gave me an answer to that. Well, if you take the word flesh and flip it around and you cancel the H, you have self. And that really answers a lot of questions. I think the root of all sin, and if you're thinking about that First Timothy chapter 6 passage where it says the root of all evil is, is, is the love of money. You know, the love of money is the root of all evil. Well, it's not the texture of it. It's what it gets for you. So selfishness is even underneath that. It's self-centeredness. That's why Jesus said in Luke 9, 23, I quote this a lot. If any man will come after me, let him deny him, what? Himself. And so that's where it is. But anyway, going back to what's the difference between flesh and, and demon, demon spirits. I think things that are going to try and get gain for you that you want, um, for yourself, whether it be lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, all those various things that make you look good, feel good, you know, it, it's about self gratification, if you will. And that could be emotional stuff. It really feels good when I get mad at this person. I'm going to hit him or I'm going to cuss at him or I'm going to give retribution back, you know, rep, uh, whatever it is to release that emotion and all but that's flesh. A lot of that you're walking after the flesh. Um, so all those things are uh, basically to get gain and, and satisfaction. Um, where the spirits are active in that, demons give thoughts to, why don't you say it back to them, look what they did to you. Or they say, oh, look at that, you know, and you want to indulge in some fleshly activity. It could be everything from lusting after others to power to greed to money to overeating you know they just constantly got to eat i got to eat i got to eat i got to overeat and all that and, and jesus warned about that by the way it's a sin so there's all sorts of things like that so he's involved in stimulating the flesh but then there's other things that come to your thoughts and mind uh to your thoughts of your mind and that is things like heresies or false religions or accusations against the character of god or lies about his existence or lies about Christianity or all those things, you know? Um, so he, uh, he embellishes stuff. He lies like crazy. So a bunch of lies aren't necessarily your flesh at all. It's demonic spirits. It's what the Bible calls fiery darts. Um, and that's why it says shield of faith. So they're related, by the way, he says, quench all the fiery darts with the shield of what? Faith, belief, belief system. That's really important to know the truth so that you can have uh, faith in that truth so that you can resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Scripture says in James 4, 8, I think it is. All right, so now the flesh in a sense, uh, I would say, is sort of kind of neutral. Your body isn't evil. You know, it can produce evil, it can produce good, right? So the flesh kind of is just neutral. And when you listen to a, 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 an, a temptation, a, an allurement, an enticement, a lie or whatever, it could cause a reaction of your body alive. It makes it alive. And you say, no, I'm not going to listen to that. Uh, I'm not going to lust any after this or that or whatever. You don't want it. You don't desire it. And then the body just settles back to a neutrality again. It doesn't come alive. Sin does not revive itself in your body because you choose not to do it. You walk after the spirit and shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So you choose to focus on your mind. Now, here's how you battle it all. You focus on your mind on Jesus, 
uh, you'll have perfect peace. Isaiah 26, 3, thou shalt keep it in perfect peace. I mean, there's a lot of verses I quote a lot, but these, it is really apropos. It really works well. And these set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. And he goes on after that and talks about, therefore, mortify the deeds of the body, put it to death. He talks about, you know, all these sins and everything underneath that. The way to do it is set your affection on things above. Stay focused on the offensive and defense. You don't have to be as defensive. If you're busy doing the work of God, if you're busy worshiping him, if you're busy reading the word, if you keep yourself uh, very active in in his service and in his uh, in his in the search for him and waiting on him and all that, your mind is towards him your flesh will just come right along <laughs> it's like the caboose of a train and the devil will also have less time to agitate you idleness is a devil's playground it's been said and so you need to focus on him and love him and worship him and be so busy about doing a service and so busy and active and the offensive then you don't have to play defensive as much although there's going to be times of defensive things that you have to do having done all stand it's a, just stand your ground with cleats in the in the in the in the soil of the uh, turf that you're attacking and just stand with your teeth grit and just stand and just wait on god to you know it seems so powerful i mean there's powerful entities coming against you and you just stand defensively there are times of defense rather than offense but i think if you're more offensive he's just going to be behind you a lot and that's why you need to just say get behind me satan <laughs> god bless you